And while they're doing that, hi everybody, I'm Wendy Murdoch. This is Webinars with Wendy. We have been continuing to do this series of webinars now for over two years, and we haven't done a Facebook Live in a really long time. So we thought we'd do one with Sharon and Laura Wilsey with Horse Speak. Uh, we never know where the conversation's gonna go. It's always fun. I hope you join us either live or you watch this later on on the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel because all the webinars with Wendy are posted on the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel. And we have a playlist that's just for Sharon and, and Laura. And I think we're up to webinar, no, I don't know, 12, 13, 15. I don't even know how many webinar we've done. 14. 14. Okay, webinar 14. So, yeah, uh, well, and we're going to let them explain horse speak so you get an idea of what it is. And then we'll just roll from there. If you have questions and you're watching on Facebook, I cannot respond to them. Uh, we'll have to answer them after the show. If you're on the Zoom channel, you can watch it. You can send us a chat or Q&A &A and we can answer them there. If you wanna try and get onto the Zoom, you go to murdochmethod.com shop, you go to the webinars with Wendy and you sign up and I'll see if I can organize all of that and get you in while we're running live. Okay, so take it away, <laughs> Sharon and Laura. <laughs> well, well, that's how this is going to go. <laughs> this is how it's going to go today. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm Laura Wilsey. This is Sharon Wilsey, and we are the co-creators of Horse Speak. But really, Sharon is the creator. I just am her sidekick, and we constantly talk about horse on horse communication, and that's the basis of Horse Speak. Is through many years of observation on how horses communicate with each other, and then how we can imitate horse body language, even though we are humans with hands and feet and being a vertical being versus horizontal. And so through precise awareness of our body gestures, postures, and signals, we can have, we can have conversation with horses. We can have like the moments when you say, Sharon always says, on Tuesday, it was great. Let's see if I can remember what happened on Tuesday. But now you can recreate Tuesday because you'll know exactly and specifically what you did, how you did it. Especially we do ask our students to film themselves working with their horses. So then they can start looking at their gestures, postures and signals and see the moments that where they were dead on with what they were saying versus maybe they missed something. So it's just been a beautiful journey of teaching people how to be able to build rebuild their relationship with their horses. It's, it's been absolutely stunning since the book came out in 2016. And we're very excited within a couple of weeks, book number three called Essential Horse Speak is going to arrive on our continent. Um, <laughs> we just don't know the exact date, supposedly the 17th of June, but we're just, you know, just have to go with the flow the way, you know, everything's a little bit off these days. So, yes, yes. Um, and so, so for those who have never heard of horse speak, Sharon, give us a brief example of how you communicate with horses or how horses speak in horse language. Okay. So the, the two misconceptions that usually arise when we start talking about this is one, people think, oh, this is another version of natural horsemanship. And two, people think, oh, this is like being psychic. So it's <laughs> neither. neither. <laughs> it's not psychic and it's not natural horsemanship. <clears throat> um, what, what is going on with this is that the, the decoding of the precise micro movements of horses, their gestures, their postures, uh, certain signals that they do, like a swish of a tail, uh, or if they toss their head, uh, there's movement from their muzzle all the way through the body to the tail and even out all four feet. And all of that movement equates a different concept in their dialogue. So if you could imagine that all you ever had was charades. So in this country, we say charades. In Germany, they say pantomime. But this game where you, have, you can't talk and you have to just, you have to just act out. You're going out. Like, yeah. that's right. You just have to act like a mime, where's the wall? You just have to act like that. And that's the only way you have to communicate. You don't even have the convenience of an understood sign language where um, people who are hearing impaired can communicate with other hearing impaired people or 
with people with normal hearing who know how to sign with them. So it's an established language that people learn to do to communicate. You don't even have that as an advantage. You literally just have to guess, get people to guess that you're hungry, you're tired, you need something, you want something, or you have an ache and pain somewhere. So that's the only way that horses have to communicate, but they're thorough in it. So because it's the only way they have to communicate, they're amazing at communicating with their body. And they use everything from how they use, look at things, how they, what happens to their eye, how they breathe, breath messages are big. Um, even like the front feet versus the back feet, which front feet tend to be needs, wants, desires, choices. I want, I don't wanna be in these cross ties. I do want that food to come faster. Um, I want to go over there. So that would be a combination. Back feet tend to represent feelings and they tend to store the emotional, um, emotional realm in their hindquarters and they express it through the tail. So the tail goes up, that's you know, startled or intense emotion. The tail is kind of let leisurely wagging. You know, it's a comfortable emotion or the tail is swishing like this. No, it's an unhappy emotion. So the hind feet go along with that. They might stomp with the hind foot or cock it defensively or cock it in a relaxed way. So the hind legs and the hind end tends to represent what the horse is currently feeling, but also it can be a storage place for old emotions. So something that happened and the horse experienced and they didn't know what to do with it. It was complicated. Maybe it was traumatizing. Maybe it was just confusing and it gets stored in the, in the muscle memory of that area of the body. So they have a, an ability to process information which comes in through their face. So eyes, ears, nose, mouth it needs to go through the long, long neck and then through the rest of the body. And then finally it goes into the pelvis and they have, a, they have an aha about it or they have a, uh, I can't, I don't know what to do with this. So they have an aha about it. The tail will go, oh, hmm, and then they'll move. Or the tail will go, mm, mm, and then maybe get stuck. Okay, so if like, you know, for instance, some typical challenges that people have with horses, uh, they won't stand still in the cross ties. Well, which don't stand still? Front feet, back feet, or one side more than the other, or diagonal, or just one front foot, or just one back, like which one? Because all of those are conditions. All of those have different meaning. Or my horse is really braced in the neck. Oh, well, if they're really braced in the neck, is that more of an emotional component where they can't swallow what their what their experience is? So just like us, we can get really locked in our throat. Some people say like, I have a, a lump in my throat about this. I have a frog in my throat. I can't speak my truth. Or as a cat got your tongue. You know, we, we have a lot of sayings about that because we get caught in our throat too if we're having a hard time expressing ourselves or swallowing what's happening around us. Horses have the same kind of visceral reaction to the world around them. So if they are bracing in their neck, is it musculature only, like they have an injury? Or is it also some experience that they're like, I can't, I'm just gonna shut that off and I don't know what to do with it. So I'm just gonna be a good little soldier and move on. And some horses can just kind of move on and you'll see them be very braced, but they'll go to work every day and do this. They're not gonna get very supple. And you'll see other horses can't move on they go ah i can't if i didn't know how to process information i don't know what and one of the other interesting features of um learning horse speak is learning about the roles in the herd and i was always taught that there's a sort of alpha dominance thing and it's when you actually study healthy herds that's not the case there are certainly um there's a hierarchy and there's certain beings that are on the upper end of the hierarchy but it's not a wolf pack where i get more meat than you it's actually a protection cycle. So <clears throat> the horses who are higher in the hierarchy have more responsibility. They have more teaching uh, responsibilities to teach the young, more mentor responsibilities to help the horses of the herd that are having a hard time, uh, more sentry responsibilities to keep an eye out, more protection responsibilities. So the horses who push horses off the hay and are mean and kick everybody, that's not a leader, that's a bully. And horses become bullies because they're they're blocked and locked and they don't know how to process information or they're stressed, they're overwhelmed, they're in pain. 
they didn't get a good education, early childhood education. This is an animal that lives a long time. Any animal that lives a long time has a more complex social system. So they are, it's really important for the young horses that are getting weaned to have an appropriate mentor and appropriate growing situation. Um, it's kind of like a lot of horses get thrown into the foster care system. And it's just like, good luck if you get emotional growth out of that. So some they do. get put out in with uh, a bunch of horses that are a similar age. Similar age and, and it's so just then Lord of the Flies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you know what I, all I, kinds I of things sleep over. Yeah. I am I'm gonna screen share here because I've just scrolled back through my photos and I found the photos from when we met at um equine affair. <laughs> and oh wow. Like, okay. <laughs> 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 So this, the Equitana, thank you. Yeah, this is back in 2019. And um, I'm not sure what, but that's uh, somebody else's demo. These were just some of the, the photos, but here's here's where Sharon and Laura and I met. And this is Brynja Rydell and, um, uh, oh. Sabiel. Sabiel. Sabiel, and I forgot the rider's name. Um, but that's where we first met is way back when at, at uh, Equitana. Can and you go back to that other, look at that. You know what I'm doing? Talking to the horse. Yeah, you yes. are. <laughs> Surprise. Yes, you're talking to the horse there. But I'm wondering if I got a little video here. Of it. Hang on, let me just see. I think I have some video here from that that's not just us standing there talking to the horse. But I, well, I do have this. This is a 30 second clip. Um, Good. Turn down the sound here. Uh, if I can turn down the sound. There we go. Turned off the sound and the little thing will go away. And let's see if I can make that bigger. So we met at, at, at Equitana uh, in 2019, 2019, boy, uh, that feels like 20,000 years ago. It's and a lot has happened since then. A lot has happened. And let me just see if I have a little longer video clip. But the reason that we met is because I was doing sure-footed at Equitana and I was told to meet Sharon and Laura and we met there on the floor uh, over by my booth and I was going to do a demo and I just, oh, I've got spinning disc here. Um, and I just dragged her into the arena and said, you stand with Brynja and tell her what you see going on. I can't hear a thing because all the speakers were oriented. As you can see, here's all the speakers and they're oriented to the outside of the arena. And I think my program just crashed. Um, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it's Mercury retrograde, you know, it's like not working. It's anything. almost over. <laughs> I know June 3rd, June 3rd. Um, but what was really fascinating, yeah, it's like totally shut down. Uh, let me stop share and see if I can't get it going. But you tell them a little bit about what we did there and and um, while I try to get yeah. the program up and running. Well, <laughs> what was exciting about that was and another American next right. to us. First yeah. of all, that was exciting <laughs> because we could we could talk to you. And it proves the point of like when you can speak the language you know you're just like ah yeah uh, and then it was kind of love at first sight because we were both very like zesty and vivacious and you were like come with me same come height come say what the horses are saying and i was like okay yeah who are you <laughs> okay <laughs> great uh and i stood on the pads and i was like wow and one thing that i loved about um learning about who you are and what you do is feldenkrais and I've had, I'd had some experience with Feldenkrais in the past, but not like, you know, you, you brought me through a couple of Feldenkrais moments. And so then understanding that that's a component of what went into the understanding of how the pads are working, at least the understanding on a gestalt level, um, standing on the pads for myself and saying, holy cow, because jet lag, you know, all the kinds of things and standing on the pads and feeling all the correction. So that was really helpful. So then when I went into the arena and I saw the horses having that experience, you know, I could, I could look at them unlocking like the neck or unlocking the body or going into what I call rock the baby, which is soothing like mammals rock when they want to be soothed. But in the horses, it wasn't only soothing when they stand on the pads. It's also they're isolating certain um, areas in their body and they're exploring, well, what does this do? And what does that do? It's like, if you've only moved in the same way for 10 years, you, you get locked into a pattern and your brain shuts down and says, that's me. And then when you start to wake up to that pattern and realize, whoa, no, that's a, that's a weird pattern. Like and this was the benefit, Wendy, of going through some of the Feldenkrais exercises you had me do because you're like, can you feel that? And I'd be like, what? No, <laughs> 
feel what? And you're like, well, don't you see the pattern you're doing? And I'm like, no, I don't see the pattern. I don't know what you're talking about. This is me. This is normal. And then, you know, you kind of put my head up straight and I go, holy cow. So <laughs> to realize that that was the <clears throat> experience the horses were having on the pads and that they're, they're standing on them and they're having a holy cow experience. I can experience myself differently. I can go through and because they're the masters of body language. They're also masterfully aware of their proprioception, of their of their balance, of their body. And you know, people will often say, "Oh, a lot of the horse speak buttons happen to land on or near you know certain acupuncture points or meridian lines." And I'll say, "Well, yeah, but horses didn't study acupuncture, and they don't know anything about anatomy. But they do know that those are the buttons that represent meaning and intention. They learn it from mom." Some of it's intrinsic, some of it's learned. And it just so happens that that button is also on a meridian that represents that kind of emotional part of the lower intestine, or it represents the kind of passion of the liver or whatever, right? So all those things go together. But watching horses sort of reassess, you know, and then um, going to the brain seminar that you and I went to, which was great and learning how, how big the cerebellum really is in a horse and how much um, area of the brain the cerebellum takes up in a horse. So seeing them do this is, is a much different experience, I think, for them than for us, where in the, the brain uh, workshop we went to, the, the teacher was saying, you know, the human cerebellum in contrast is not that big. It doesn't, our brain is, is given over to more, the higher this thinking. Is rocking. The rock and the baby. This is the rock and the baby. And so what's cool is he's not only navigating himself, he's navigating the rider and she's having an aha experience. Look at her face. She's like, whoa, I think this is, this is my guess, Wendy. You can correct me if I'm wrong because you probably know more about this than I do. But my guess is that one of the reasons we like riding horses so much is our cerebellum borrows theirs. Oh, that's a great way to say it. You know, and I, I, um, I always think about, especially with jumping, that we're, we're able to leave gravity for a moment. But in right. that, in canter, canter can, is that, that gate that people love but get kind of scared about. And it's that same thing of lightness and freedom that we're able to move in a way that we can't do on our own. Um, right. So, so this, was, this was the, I don't know if you're in this shot. Uh, I'm back here. Bryn, you just walked past and somebody's filming this horse. And I, so I'm not sure. Um, whether you was were there or not, but this is where we met. And was Laura I filming? I don't know. I, I don't think, did you give me your phone? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know. But I, think I want to go filming. back to this place over here because he does something really quite interesting. He's like yeah. totally in the Zen mode. And then he suddenly has a little startle moment, right? There's our lick and chew right there. And and that concern with, how would you describe or talk about that kind of uh, a response? Her head. also wait, had wait. a twiggle before in the left, that left ear. Yeah. At the yes. beginning. Yes. In, it, in the shoulder. But her, the balance of her head. See, he wants her head to come back center. See that? Go yeah. back and show that again and just look at her. Cause she's talking to someone on the side which is setting offsetting the balance. See there she's in the center. And there she's, when you turn your head, see his, his ears prick and his nose adjust by going against her head to, mm -hmm. to offset the balance. And she's, you know, she's talking right there, she's center. And then her head stays consistently that way. It keeps driving that way, which is driving that shoulder deeper. So that it's her head turning this way, making his opposite shoulder go that way. So he's like, hey, I'm doing something here. Yeah. And what's interesting is how much licking and chewing he did at, like that kind of startle reflex and then right. all that licking and chewing, it, you know, which is, it's like, you see these two different competing concepts right there. And well, she well, look at it. Kind of shook too. too. <laughs> right. Like she seemed to switch and now it seems to be more in alignment with the horse. Rather because than see, he's trying to work something out in himself and yeah. he needed her head to be front and center in order to do that. We see this happen all the time with horse people doing groundwork. And then once the horse starts gaining better balance, they start touching the person going, well, your shoulder sucks. Well, your <laughs> belly's not contract. Well, you're not bending your knees. And they start going up and down the person's body and going, well, if you're going to want me to be balanced, you need to be balanced. 
And that's what he's saying to her. I just had a whole session yesterday with the rider and the watching horses say, would you please learning something? Yeah. Then he said, right. learning. And something. let's talk about this the behavior that he does right at the end, because so many people have so many different explanations for this. And I'm, I'm just, well, in, in terms of horse speak, in terms of studying horses for now, 15, almost 20, 16 years, what this is is called learning something that's a gesture that they do when they're having a learning moment they're having a learning experience so <clears throat> you could call it an aha moment but it happens when they've had an understanding so that's why we say a learning because it could be in relation to something we're doing like you might see it <clears throat> you're trying to teach the horse something new and they're finally like i get it and they rub right there or they, you might be learning something new and you get it and they'll do the gesture in relation to you or sort of everything's coming together and they're going, I get it about myself, but it's a, aha, oh, I get it. And we do the same thing. It's like this. Oh, we do all the time. We do. It's the same thing. It's touching our mouth with our foreleg. They're just doing it here because they don't have fingers. So they have to put their mouth on the foreleg, but it's the same gesture, the same. And that's the meaning. one, that's the shoulder that he, at the beginning of the video, was definitely starting to pay attention to. Because he like shifted a little bit, he twiggled, his ear shifted. Um, and so it's not surprising actually from beginning to end that he moved and did the learning on that particular leg. Now, what's important yeah. is that horse speak, and I'm gonna, I'm going to this one. Horse speak isn't just, and surefoot is not just for horses. Um, this was a lovely mule that um, was at uh, Equitana. I don't know if you ever got to talk to this mule. I didn't get to talk to this mule. That was part of the the army thing, I think, right? No, no, this was the one that um, uh, who who had it. She, they had the two horses. Um, Oh, I've forgotten her name. She spoke English really well, of course. So uh -huh. talk to her. Um, but a mule that Linda Tellington Jones and Jim Masterson and I were the only ones that were allowed to touch it. And clearly you didn't see this mule because I'm sure you would have been able to as well. Um, but there's an interesting little thing that I'll move us over here. Um, right there. Yep. Right. So talk about that little tail swish right there that we just saw. Okay, we'll go back before it because <clears throat> so a tail swish is the end of the thought. So the beginning of the thought happens here where is this a, a, a Molly? Is this a female? Yeah. So she's there. So watch, stop right there. So something just happened in the ears, the expression, the eyes. So go back to the ears going forward there. Okay, stop there. So that's a forward expression and it could be environmental or it could be she's scanning herself. So what we see is equines scan themselves. They kind of like ping pong information forward, backward, forward, backward. Imagine inside your body is a map of all your experiences. And according to somatic therapy, that's, that's true. There's this whole world of <laughs> somatic therapy now because there is a map in our body of all our experiences. But imagine you know about the map instead of like people were like, really, I have a map in my body? I have to go to somatic therapy and learn about that. So um, equines know about the map. They utilize the map. So imagine here, she just scanned forward. Now, that could be a combination of scanning forward and going into her environment because um, because of the, the a lot of things going on in the environment, but the expression on her face is very peaceful in that moment. It's very perky. It's, it's a nice expression. So go forward a little bit. There. That's definitely about something coming up behind her and her eye gets hard. So her, her eye goes from being peaceful and in, like interested to what's going on back there. And then you see a second later, a horse walks by. So just keep going. There we get a really deep blink. There's a deep blink. So that is in, because we know that the horse is walking by. So we know that the horse is coming. So in the middle of paying attention to the environment, she's also trying to pay attention to herself. So let's keep going forward. 
there. So there was a change of the balance point of her head. Yep. See, so she moved. So there's a little craniosacral connection in herself there. See it? Yep. Okay. And she's a little frozen in the hind quarter, but that leg wiggles. That right. Leg. The right leg yeah, wiggles. The right front w- w- wiggles. Yeah. So when that's happening, it's like, I want, I experience, I'm choosing something else. There's a, there's a lightning up. Of Actually the watch this whole balance shift that she does right here. She's <laughs> backward. everything back. Yeah. yeah. So I'm choosing something else. I'm so she's let's imagine let's just, we're going to put words on it. And it's going to sound like we're anthropomorphizing, but there's no other way to describe this stuff without using terms we understand. So let's say that you go, what about this in my life? And then you say, you know what? I think I'm just really ready to let that go. So <clears throat> everybody has arrived at a moment where you kind of hung up on something, something happened, somebody, somebody made you mad, right? And you're kind of hung up. And there's a moment where you go, I'm done. I'm over it. Like you just kind of organically reach that point. And you're like, I'm over it. And so what do you do? You do, you come, you kind of sit down, you kind of relax, right? So that energy, what you see her going backwards, well, they can't physically sit down like we do on their butts, although they do lie down. And when they lie down, they have to buckle the hind end in order to go down. So that sending the motion all the way through to the hind end is the equivalent of sit down and then tail swish is all done. So the tail yeah. swish, that tail swish is all done. So she went, she processed something. She sent the message back through. She sat down about it. She had a tail swish. But at the same time, this horse, which is off camera right now, is walking by. So there she has to pay attention to that. And I don't know what their oh. relationship is, but she's trying to share it with that horse in that moment. They're friends. Yeah. Okay. So she's like, I'm all, I'm, I'm all better. Did you see that? I felt better. This is great. You should do this. So I'll play it in real time because it's, you know, there's so much detail that occurs and which we miss in real time and and that slowing it down and being able to like that little body shift back before the there's the rock back yep so that's the process that's literally what the process is and then hit the emotion center and her tail switched about it and then she was like i can connect to my friend i just got it i figured it out i feel better and do you think that tail swish could have been like telling her friend, please don't come here? Or do you feel like that was the finish of the process? It's kind of both because of the quality of the tail swish. It's a little bit like, don't bother me, but it's also, um, I'm complete. I'm done. So it's both things at the well, same time. And I can show you kind of how much I'm done here. Let me just share this because this was for her to do. This was quite a, a big deal. Um, she was, she, you know, because this oh. is a really strange environment for her. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of people and a lot of noise. So that's a huge recapitulation of her whole nervous system and everything. That's a big role. <laughs> it's a really big role. <laughs> and, and this is the quality of sitting that she was ready for. So she's like, I'm done with whatever she's done with. It's good for her. You know, because especially mules and donkeys kind of make that, they make those decisions, right? And they're like, they make a decision and then that's it. So yeah. she's made a decision about something that feels really good to her. And she feels secure enough in herself and in her person to go ahead and do this rolling and then sit down. See the sit button there above the hawk at the back of the rump? Yep. See that angle right there? That's what we call the sit button. So her laying like that with that leg there, she, she's in that sit position again. This is as sitting as sitness as she can get without sitting like a dog. So that's really given her hindquarters and a lot of the tail, tail swishing there. It's really releasing a deep emotional whatever. And yeah, we can't know it, you know, we can't know exactly. And this is where a psychic would come in to be like, well, what is in her head? I don't know what's in her head, but I can see the responses. I can see the reactions and I can see that she's releasing something. We could hazard a guess. We can make an educated guess, but we, you know, without knowing. Yeah, Cause that tail swishing, I can't get my, my uh, scrubber out of the way, but that tail swishing at the end is quite interesting because it's uh, very definite, like yep. right there and there and there and there and there. And for yeah. her to have the level of comfort to be able to actually lay down in that arena was just, Huge. Right. Huge. And that was a minute and seven seconds. 
Yeah. That's a long roll. Yeah. Oh, hi, Kitty. Um, so, you know, it's like um, <laughs> somebody says, oh, I really wanted to see her shake it off. In a way, she rolled it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, the shake she must have had after that must have been. Oh, yeah. Actually, when she got up, I, I didn't get that on camera. So, you know, what, one of the things you bring up is that there's a lot of things that we actually fail to recognize as meaningful. Right. Uh, because we don't see the subtleties. Like when we looked at that video and you explained it and we slowed it down, there was a huge amount of subtlety that you could see in terms of the rock back of the weight, the tail swish that occurred right after the rock back that we, we tend to not be uh, good observers. And I think with the thing that Horse Speak really does for so many people is it teaches them how to be better observers of these things yep. so that instead of just kind of blowing them off and pulling the horse's head back and saying, pay attention, we're like, right. oh, wait a second, there, there's a communication here at a subtle level that we're really missing. Yeah, you know, one of our themes is everything means something. That's right. one of our, that's our, the title of our year long program that has open enrollment. If you go to horsefeedacademy.com, oh, you can check it out. Just so but, you know. Just so you know. Um, but yeah, it's like every little thing Means has something. a meaning. It's so fascinating. And, and this is not, and this is based on like, so like we, we just witnessed what the, that's a donkey. Is that a donkey or a mule? Mule. Mule. Okay. So we just watched her and we watched all that. <clears throat> so in order for us to say, this is what this part of the body is talking about and this part and this part and this part. It's because we've witnessed hundreds of videos, hundreds of live experiences. And one of the trainings that I do is teaching people to wire and fire their mirror neurons in a new way so that you can start to um, change your, your viewpoint because we have a really powerful filtration system and we're just like, la, 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 that's not important. There's a lot of stuff in our environment that we're just like, blink not even tuned into. And we've been taught to, to do that, but in order to, to switch um, the, our reticular activating system to pay attention to key points that are important, we have to teach it that those things are important. And so there's a mirroring exercise that I have people go through. And I say, really mirroring is gonna, it's gonna take the rest of your life. Yeah. Because this, there's not, you're not gonna get it and like, oh, I did mirroring for a week and all done, no. <laughs> no, no. no. But you can start the mirroring process where you want nothing from the horse. You, it's not about the horse looking at you. The horse is supposed to ignore you completely and be living their life. And you're on the other side of a fence. And what you're doing is pick a body part and do what it does. So literally try to keep up with their chewing with your own mouth or in your mind, if you're around a lot of people and you're like, I just don't want to be doing this kind of stuff around people looking at me. So then you can do it in your mind. So in your mind, you can be like, Wow, I see his mouth, 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 blink, 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 eye, ear, turns out to the left. Oh, dropped it, lifted up, dropped it. Oh, he took a step. How did he take a step? I was paying attention to his face. I didn't even see he was about to take a step. Wow. So like this kind of mirroring for three minutes at a time, along with a video at the same time. So you can go back and look at the video, slow motion. What did I miss? So what did I, I see? Know. What did I not see? Yeah, because that's... that's so important. Um, so I wanted to play this video. This is a little Mustang that this is before I did any surefoot with her and she has a heart monitor on. So if you're wondering what that strap is, I was playing around oh, with the heart monitors great. Um, and that's what that strap is. And I can't remember what I've done with the data, but, um, but I thought this would be interesting because she's so different from some of the other horses that we've just looked at. And she, I'm assuming she's been handled. Yes. And her and her mom is there in the round pen with me. Let's see if I can move us out of the way. Yeah. All right. So what I'll do is I'll take this back to the beginning. Okay. And uh, because I know video doesn't play well on Zoom. 
What is, what is it precisely that, I mean, I could tell you, we, we well, I this just, because this is such a different horse from the other ones where they're already on pads oh. and they're relaxed. I thought maybe you could just describe a little bit about this horse and her behaviors, her okay. messaging. All right. So we'll right there. <clears throat> I'm assuming since she's in a round pen, this is a Mustang pen because of the, the, the solid wall and the height of the wall. Cause these guys can jump from a standstill, like six. It's crazy. So I'm assuming that she's probably been worked in it. There's some deep um, hoof prints behind her. So I, I, w did she do a round pen session before you did? No, nope, we did, we, she'd been in the round pen before, but I just put her in the round pen because I wanted her loose when I started doing short. Oh, okay. See how she would okay. respond loose. Okay. So what she's doing here is when, when you go into a pen with a horse and they go to the far end and they look at you, what they're describing is how big their bubble might be and how much bubble there might be between you and them. <laughs> the wild horse is typically going to be like a uh, big bubble, please. Um, but the other thing that they're saying from being across the arena fence, uh, round pen, whatever it is, is they're saying you can have all the space. I'll get as far out of your bubble as I can and you can own the whole, you can have all the space. So I will go as far away from you. So it's a sign of respect. It's counterintuitive. So that's the first thing. If a horse stays a distance from you, but looks at you, they're saying you're higher in the hierarchy than me. You have a bigger bubble than me. You can, you have more right to the space and I'll follow you because afterwards when we see her follow her owner, she has a, a nice distance between herself and the person with a, with a low head in classic follower position not driving position. So everything about her says, I yield the space to you. You win the chess game, you know, you, where, wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, I'll pay attention to you. And I'll also concede the space. Because if you're a horse, space is the only thing that matters. Food's on the ground. So that doesn't matter as much. It matters to them, obviously, but especially a wild horse, food's on the ground. So what matters to wild horses is space. If I don't have enough space, I don't know if I'm going to survive. So giving you space is a sign of respect. And so that's really interesting because a lot of people would interpret this as the horse doesn't want to be near me. And instead the horse is saying, I'm giving you uh, all the space you that I would honor you with this space as opposed to, I don't want to be near you. Yeah, I would honor you with this space. I like that. That's a really, that's, a, that's precisely what I mean. That's really great. Yeah, because the word respect is a bit sullied in the horsemanship world. The but word I don't know respect what to me is so mis misused and abused. Um, right. And so, but 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 many people would misinterpret this and think, oh, the horse is trying to get away from me, and instead, it's oh, the horse is honoring me by giving me all the space that it can. So that so one of the things, and I kind of okay, we're going to dive diverge here a little as we always do. But you know, when you watch um, horses and birds flying. Right? How is it that they never run into each other? <laughs> yeah, because their proprioception expands to the space around them. And the best way for a human being to understand this is when you're driving your car. If another driver is too close, if another car is too close to the back of your car, what is the slang term that we mostly say? Get off my butt. Yeah. You're driving up my butt. No, you're not. You're driving behind my car. My butt is in the seat. You're not anywhere near my but physical the awareness. Butt. It's amazing. But the awareness you're is, like, can tell when someone's breaking. Oh yeah. Heart, you know, or from the side, you're like looking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If they're swerving, yeah. it's, that's what we call it with the horses that stay in your lane. And they're really good at staying in their lane and knowing where the lane is and knowing if they've crossed the line and knowing if they're swerving or not mm -hmm. swerving. And we're not because we're two legged. So we have to do this and do crossovers to change direction. So all we have to do is put one foot in one, one new angle and there we are, but they have to arrange all four feet. So these two, and then these two, and then the body turns like, and then the head and neck. So it's more like turning a boat right. for them to change, but we can just be like blink, 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 blink. And so we can be swerving when we're moving and not even realize it. And we're cutting them off and we're, we're just sort and of bad drivers. Part of the observation skills that we are teaching with horse speak. And one of the keynotes of that is eye contact because horses do a ton of eye contact and that ear and eye messages to each other is a huge thing when, when they're moving in harmony together at speed. So then here she's approaching, she feels welcomed. 
whatever happened, but she feels welcomed. Maybe she even feels beckoned. But as she's approaching, she turns her head to the side. Now, on one hand, she could be taken in the camera. So they can, they can do two things at once, just like we can. We can be talking to the kids and talking to an adult at the same time. We can be at a dinner table with five people and carrying on all these different conversations. So can they. So she could be looking at the camera, but also yielding the space by, by removing her cheek yielding from the space yielding the space thing. to the person that she's moving to. Or that so structure. If, right. So <clears throat> using the structure as a safety object, she stopped in the line of the structure. The, and they meaning this thing right here. That thing. Yeah. It's on the line that her feet stopped in. So to her, she buddied up with it. She put her shoulder against it. She's like, this structure is safe. This is a good line in the sand. They're always looking for geometric patterns to represent how can we have um, a, a line in the sand to define spaces. So they use structures to help define spaces. And we've proven this beyond anything. It's been amazing. So blink, 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 blink. She, yeah. she yields her head the other way. So blink, 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 blink. I'm not threatened. I'm not afraid because you don't blink if you're threatened and afraid. You don't blink if you're aggressive. You blink when you're feeling calm. And then she drops her head to leave the safety of the object. Yeah, which is cross. interesting how much lower her neck is there. Exactly. Yeah. She's crossing the line to come into the bubble space of the, of the owner. So she drops her head. So she's dropping her. She's relaxing more. She's dropping the hierarchy. She's like, <laughs> I know I'm coming into your space and this what about the way her head moves here if we go back and she's dropped it but you watch how it swings here slight like nose tipped right eye really soft right. yeah there she's including the person and there with the right front foot i want see how she looked at her own foot i want you to come over here i want you to come over here and then if i have to go to you it's more intense my nose has to get lower so I'm going to stay over here where I'm more comfortable. And now we so can for whatever person right there. Yes. So she needed to get into the shadow of the bubble of her person. And then she looks at the camera again. So some of that messaging is that camera is a little bit of a boogeyman for me. I don't know why that camera is there. I don't trust it. I want to well, be I'm, I'm also there with the camera. So she doesn't know me at all at this stage. Right. So that was, I want to so we'll go back to that for one second. So, cause it makes a complete story. Cause people are like, what does that gesture mean? It'd be like saying, what does pink mean? <laughs> Why did that person say pink? It'd be like, I don't know what they're talking about flowers. I don't know what they talk about pink for. So when you, when here, her eyes are on the person's shoulder, right? And she's lining up her eye with the movement and the other, the girl's eyes are on her eyes at the same time. So they have, shoulder to forehead and eyes to eyes. And this is what Laura was just saying, that horses use eye contact for empathy. They're reading the empathy of those around the tail swish about being alone. See, tail swish, I'm complete. I don't wanna be alone anymore. I wanna follow you because Wendy's here with a camera. I don't know what that's about. So her eye looks at you really quick and there's a little, little defensiveness when she looks at you and then she blinks. See right there, looks at the there. camera ever so quickly. With that, with, go back, go back one step, one step, because also watch the right front foot. There, stop. See, she timed the blink with the, with the movement of that foot because that foot is defining her boundary. She's like, this is my line. Don't even look at me. La, 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 you're not there. It's like a kid pulling the covers up. You can't see me. And she puts her foot down and blinks at the same moment to be like, la, 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 I'm kind of exposed right here. And I'm just going to get closer to my girl. I'm just going to pay attention to her. With this next step there, the left front foot, look at the width. Yeah. So she's making a choice. This is choices. I'm choosing to make a big wide step to get as close to the side of your shoulder as I can. And blink, blink. I don't want to look at that camera. And now it's behind me. I have to kind of keep looking at it. And now I'm following you. I'm following, following really low in the front. I'm really into my follower position. Thank you for giving me something safe to follow. And then there, she looks at you again. Oh, damn it. <laughs> She's bringing me back to the camera. I don't want to go to the camera. I'm going to stay on the inside. So here's, stop right here. Yeah. So here's interesting because she's maneuvered it so that her person is taking the outside. The protector horses take the flank. 
and the, the weaker horses go to the center to be protected. So that's why she flanked herself with the object in the first place. And now she's flanking herself. She's got her person on one side and that other object on the other. We call that the peanut butter and jelly moment. Can you guys be the slices of bread? No. I'll just be the people really the middle. and so she's trying to stay as squished in the middle away from the camera as she can and even as the person aims right there stop right there now the girl's belly button is aimed directly at you in that moment her her lane if she was on, on a highway driving her lane is directly at you now the horse is bent away the horse has taken the inside track in even more of an inside track so that's a turn the key come to me that's a scoop that's the horse going, can you go look at this? Get away from me. <laughs> the away from horse me. is trying to scoop the person. Scoop the person. Don't get this way. Don't this. I don't know. No, no, no. So that's what she's saying there. And the girl's like, yeah, you're cute. And then well, the and look at how the head is it. so organized yeah. to that inside, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the girl turned her head to see. So this is where, how old is this girl? uh 20s 20s okay so she's young enough that her body language skills are still amped up and working especially if she's worked with mustang stop right there so she's got unconscious proprioception that's working out really really well there's conscious stuff that she's learned to do but there's a lot of unconscious her peripherals saw that she was turning her head that way and she was she's smiling looking at her going are you nervous and she brought her head around to notice and see her horse. And the horse was like, yes, I'm very nervous. Keep coming this way. And because of the girl's attitude, the horse is staying calm. So you can keep going forward. And the horse gets her to take her belly button off the camera. Because <laughs> if she had, if the girl had kept going with her trajectory, she would have wound up right at you. But the horse is like, don't do it. And the girl's like, okay. And she changes like the position. Scooped her up. She scooped her up. It was like, oh, no, I can't go over there yet. And so now she, their, their eyes, the girl's peripheral vision and the horse's vision, because horses, their peripheral vision and their frontal vision kind of blend. They're kind of the same thing. So they, they can see each other's eyes, whether they're looking into the eye or not is the point, but they're reading. She's, they're both reading the facial expression. And the girl's got nothing but love for this horse, which is great. And then you're behind her. You're, the camera's behind the horse. So look at that ear. Yeah. And then I don't. I, what are you doing? Don't look at me, don't, woman. Don't, don't move funny. <laughs> and you can see that right there. It's there, that defensive last step with the hind leg. Go back one step. There, lift and... There, stop. Oh, she stepped wide a little bit. She stepped wide and she really demonstrated her stifle to you. And so the stifle is, is the button that we call the yield over button, but it's also the defensive button. So when a horse has another horse, <clears throat> hey, I'm grazing back here by your butt. Can you yield over? Or I'm moving, I'm changing lanes. Can you yield over? So they use the cheek for the front blinker, blink, 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 I'm going left, I'm going right. They use the yield, the stifle for the back yield button for the back blinker, blink, blink, blink. So this is how they say to each other, yield over, swivel this way, swivel that way. But it's also a button that they'll lift in this defensive way to be like, don't come in my lane. Mm. And so she lifted it here and the girls look at her peripheral vision. She kind of knew, see her eye went to it. So let's yeah. see what she does next there. She looks at it. Yeah. And that's the end of the video. <laughs> so there's a, there's an awareness in this girl's body language, which is exactly what we're talking about. She felt or knew on some intrinsic level that she felt defensive in that last thing. She looked at the hip and what she's saying with that last look is don't kick, right? And Not that yeah, actually, this is, I have a, con a little continuation. Oh, I'll good. just let this play. And what's funny is, if you ask the girl, did you know you did that? She might not have known. Right. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, hang on. Let me see if I can make this. I'll make this a little bigger because it's too funny, right? It's it is funny. 
Now really that you know what, what's going on. Yeah, it's really funny. And she walks by you going, it's fine. It's casual. Now, if she right here had done a tail swish and looked at you and done tail swish with her hand, it would have said to the mayor, we're not talking about that. Don't worry about that camera. But all she did was walk by. And so the mayor's like, oh, crap. I have to take care of it. Why do you keep taking me by that camera? I have to sentry. So what this mayor feels like, this would be the only challenge in this relationship right now. The, she loves following this girl. She absolutely loves, loves this girl. But she's like, you're not a good sentry. You're not watching you're out not protect her. for what I find dangerous. And I have to watch out. See that face? I have to protect myself. But see the inverted bad banana? The only thing I know how to do is be protective and defensive. Right. She's not proactive. She's reactive. Yeah. And, and that was actually what, one of the things with her is she, she would get reactive. Right. And so right there, the answer would have been for the girl to just point at you, blow away the boogeyman like that, and then do a tail swish for the horse. Don't worry about that. That would have given the horse. See what she did. The horse just did it. She blew at you, and, and then the she did, girl a tail did swish. something with her hand. Yeah. You could see it in the corner of the video. Hang on, I can I can shrink this down and okay. move us over. Let's see what she does. Because she's looking at you, but she's in an O posture. Now she's talking about it. She readjusts herself. She readjusts herself. And then she cocks her hip. She the cocks her hip, and she's, and she's kind of she's kind of doing shape. this. And the mayor's like, "Is that what? I really hope that's." what you mean i really hope that's a tail wish to the camera <coughs> she's like keep it keep please it low. please have it be i want learning something and you're saying the camera's okay but you're not really pointing see how her posture is like this because she's like i don't know what to do with her she gets so defensive that that's what she's probably talking about and the horse is like i don't know what to do either you need is she and every time the girl's core turns the horse goes that way like they're very magnetized to each other yeah and now, so stop right there. So you no. know what this says to the mayor? I'm out of balance. This, the girl is saying, I don't know what to do in, in horse speak. The girl is saying, I don't know what to do about this camera person either, horse. That's what it looks like to the horse. So the horse is like, shit, you don't know what to do about the camera <laughs> person either? Well, then see the right front leg the mayor has? Yeah. Look at the girl's got her legs crossed, which is in balance. Okay, so the, the lower in the pecking order you are, the less balance you display. The higher in the pecking order you are, the more balance you display. Oh, that's interesting. So, so look at the horse's front foot towards the camera. Well, I won't let that camera get you. But look <laughs> at her hind legs. They're all like, squished together. But I really hope I'm I don't secure. have to do that. So I really don't feel like I want to protect you, but I will. <laughs> bipolar conversation. It's a bipolar conversation. But, but it's just so intense. Tail swish, tail swish. I don't want to have this intense conversation anymore. Let's go somewhere else. I want. I want. I want to go somewhere Can else. Can we not be in alignment with this camera? Like, seriously. Because <laughs> the camera's clearly making you upset, too. I don't know what to do to help you. Fix your foot. Fix your foot. Fix your foot. I want. I want you to fix your feet. Yeah. Look at her. I don't have more. I wish I had a little more after that. I know. It's a good one. It would be interesting if... This, if those two human horse were on the other side of the object and how, I bet you it would be a completely different conversation. It would be. Because the object would be the line in the sand to protect. And when the girl's standing with her legs crossed, it was displaying weakness and imbalance. And, and the, the horse, horse started being starts like, going like ah! this, don't be unbalanced and weak, I need you. Yeah, because this, yeah, the horse is definitely like a very small animal. Yes. She's more of the peanut butter and jelly type. See there, it's okay, because see her feet are, are okay. And she has, stop right there, stop for a second. Hang so on. look at this. Hang on, hang on. The, the girl has put her foreleg, her left front leg, towards you towards the camera so horses are paying attention to this okay? and, the core is and her out. core is pointing so her shoulders say i don't know what to do but her foot and her and her posture is, is like i'll protect you horse and then go forward a little bit <clears throat> and then she's talking and the horse like is those, are those tail swishes that would be great if those were tail swishes boy this is intense this is so when they lower their head they're saying lower the intensity i'm trying to learn i'm trying to we're both trying to learn something there and then they look at each other and the yeah. girl steps forward with that foot and the horse leaves her foot forward there because now and she looks at you so she says i guess if you don't know what to do and i don't know what to do i'll have to protect you 
And then when she crosses her legs, though she leaves her eyes closed, like, God, no, 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 no. Don't tell me you just crossed your legs. And watch the Your ears eyes. too. Like the ears are like. Right. Uh, uh, why? Why? No, it's too intense. It's too intense. Fix your legs. Fix them. <laughs> Fix them. See how she, why she stepped with that right front leg. She's like, can you please not have your legs crossed? Because we see is, horses do this all like, the time. People are going to fall over. They're going to trip. Sometimes sitting, tell her about what sitting. I was just going to having a loose horse, people um, in an arena and people sitting in chairs at a clinic and the horse, and it's very extremely consistent, will come up to the people who have their legs crossed and sniff their ankle or their knee yep. and, and like shove it to be like, you're going to fall over. And so you need to, as soon as <laughs> the people uncross their legs, the horse leaves them alone and takes and a goes, breath. takes a breath and then goes to the next person and says, uncross your feet. What's yeah. wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Woo yeah. So, I mean, when, by the time we were, this was the very first session, right? And yeah. she was very uncertain, but um, by the time we were done, we actually, she, the rider was having difficulty with a canner and um, with the pads, we resolved the canner issues and a few other things. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. But you can see her response to me is like, whoa, what are you but doing? But look at but look at your posture. You're clear, you're concise, you're balanced, you don't cross your legs, you have a very good balance of X and O. She's definitely taking it all in. You're X enough to be like, I'm a leader, and you're O enough to be like, I'm not a threat to you. And so she's like, wow, this is what I needed. Emotionally, this is what I needed. So it's it's also about your providing mentorship that this horse is looking for. She loves this girl, this girl's like her. Her oh, she loves her yeah, she loves her mommy. Loves her, but she needed a she needed a mama. She needed a strong mentor, and the mentor is saying, "Try this pad; it'll be good." <laughs> and so, she's the as she touched her knee. She's like, "Okay, I'm, I guess I'm learning something here." Tail switch. This is very strong feelings, and now I have to process. And there's a process moment: with the lick and chew, and the tail, and the and the, and the, the and the learning something, learning, learning, learning. Okay, I'm learning. So I'm learning a lot of things really fast. Blink, blink, blink. This is a lot of information coming in. Well, and she's standing really more fast. square there too. Yeah, she is. I think she twirled her, she yeah. her chest as well. She's still pinched in the hind end, but she's she's. Well, this was the very beginning. This was yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. She's certainly into that shoulder. And you're saying now think about it from a Mustang perspective, especially. So horses, you know this, and horses need their feet, right? And horses yeah. need the space in order to run away, but they also need their feet in order to run away, and so. A Mustang, especially one who's been caught, has is become very ungrounded. Where's my home, right? What's what is the ground under my feet? And then there's this whole thing about telluric currents. You know about telluric currents? Well, and also that you know they're saying <coughs> if it's mud or that sort of thing, so that you have to go much more different with a with a Mustang with surefoot than other horses because a squishy surface could be danger. Exactly right. So here she is. Um, having all these experiences with you and you're saying you can be grounded now you can you can anchor you can you can be at home in your body because she has been at home with this girl but not at home in her body and that's why everything is still a boogeyman for her so that a lot of that tail swishing is actually um, emotional release because it's it's very much like this and we do the same thing if we're having a big emotion we might go ah! we might do that and I think a lot of our hand gestures we've picked up as a species from horses because we've been cohabitating with them for thousands of years. And I think we've kind of adopted because there's things that we do that like the primates don't do. Right. And like, this is one of them. There's a lot of hand swinging, hand swishing, which is all tail swishes. And so <laughs> there's the meaning and the intention of it. Like, what's this? Oh, yeah. like stop. Like, yeah. Well, they do that. They put their head up. They go, make this gesture. And they go boom with the tail. Boom. <laughs> and then there she connected the pad to you. So that was, I was kind of hoping this would happen. So she, there she's like, oh, the pad and you, the pad could be a mentor. 
and I'll, I'll take this back a little bit and slow it down because it's uh, like. So it's there's not just what the, pad, what the pad is doing to her body. It's yeah. what it's doing to her mind. And there she said, pad and you, pad and you. Your smell is in this pad. This pad could be a safety object that helps me feel mentored. It helps me feel grounded and connected. So she's in her mind connecting this object to the, the relationship because horses are all about relationship. So she's having a relationship with you. And then you're saying, and this pad can help you, can help your body, mind, you know, body, mind, emotions. And she's like, I don't know about the pad helping me, but you're helping me. And that moment she said, oh, you're like in the pad, like you in the pad, like the pad's part of you. Oh, that's why she's learning something. She's like, I gotta walk this off. Yeah. I already think about that. This person and this pad go together. And so therefore in the future, when she sees the pad, she'd think of you and she would feel mentored like us. Like that was my grandmother's favorite hat. And I just <laughs> love to wear it. It's like that. You wear the hat, you think of granny. So that's kind of what she just did. She made an association. They can make negative associations too. Someone abuses a horse wearing a certain hat. And then some, you put, you don't know. And you put that kind of hat on the horse runs away that day. Like we've had that happen all the time. So they can make <laughs> negative associations, but she made a positive association. And then there's this confusion here. So I'll just, where I, she walks off and I get the pad and I come over and there's that. You're in a different bubble. You're in a different geometric, I mean, um, ge geographic location on the chessboard. Yeah. So the other place she was flanked by the, the safety object in the middle. Uh, she had the safety object <laughs> and she was in that, that corner. She, that corner to her represents safety. This corner to her represents, I need space. It's where we started. It's where the video started. That's with, right. Over there. Yeah. yeah. So she went back to the corner that says, I need space. I need a minute. And you're like, but here's the pad. And she's like, no, 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 no. This is my, I need space. This is my privacy place. I need to go to my happy place. And have now she's going back. Now I'm going side. back to the other side. You want to talk to me about the pad. We have to do it here. This is where I can work things out. Well, because she didn't have quite enough space to process. She's a little insecure, but then she's like, but see, here's where she brought you there. She's like, you and the pad yeah. stay here. Yeah. She gave you some crayons and said, go color for a minute. <laughs> well, and I, and it, um, you know, this is where it's so important for people to understand that a little tiny bit in the beginning is, goes so far because it, there's so much for them to kind of have to work through from just that little experience. And that exactly. it's not about quantity. It's not about duration. It's about, you know, just offering them an opportunity and then letting them sit on it. Right. Just sit with yep. it for a minute. Cause she looks a little bit better. She does that left front at the beginning of the very, very beginning of the video. Uh, she looked like she wasn't feeling that great in it. And it doesn't look like she's having that same experience anymore. And she was willing to maybe cock the left hip right there. She thought about it. And then what she's done is she showed you all her buttons on both sides. And then she walked off with a low head that says, it's too intense for me. I need to go. So when they drop their head, they're lowering the intensity. Yeah. Right. And then she goes back to that resting spot. She goes back to her resting spot and makes a safety object on the wall and does a reset on her mouse. I'm yeah. wondering, what is the difference? Do you remember what is the difference of the two sides of that round pen? Is that round pen like where she went at the end of that clip? Is that like where she lives versus oh. the other side? Do you know? Do you, I, do you know? I couldn't tell you. It would just be interesting because of, of talking about the geographic locations of like where horses feel safe versus not or where they want to go. And they, what we've thing. learned recently, Wendy, recently, meaning the last couple of months, is that the horses are also precise about where we have this conversation. And when we've watched horses in herds, like they put the whole herd in a, in a new environment and watch them run around. And each of the, the horses has a different conversation in a different spot in the new chessboard. And then they cycle back around and go back to that spot to review that conversation oh, and either fix it, go deeper about it, but they don't have that conversation over here. They go back to that location yeah. to have and that Actually, that makes a lot of sense. They revisit, but you can see here now, she's got both feet on a physio, half physio pad, right? Wow. Um, yeah. And you can see how different she's standing on her two feet. Yes. So I think yeah. what Laura was picking up on is that one of the things that was going on was how different she was standing on her two feet. 
but you know, this is, this is like the next evening, I think. Yeah. And that's how different she was from just giving her a little bit of time. Yeah. Absolutely. The sleep cycle goes a long way for yeah. sure. Huge. huge. Awesome. It's very huge. And look at the, the, oh, the, the sure footedness in her chest. Yeah. So she was the sure footedness. Sure. <laughs> Oh, actually, uh, let me just go back here. I do have a, uh, how do I get there? Hang on, I gotta get back to Zoom to get back over here, to get back over here, to get over here, to get over. Yeah, here, this is, oh, this is just a tiny second. Um, the one before, this is the one you're talking about. Yeah. So look at her pectoral muscles. They're they're shifting and they're moving. They're growing. They're getting stronger. That's a sign of proud, like self pride, but it's also a sign of well being. We, we do the same thing. I feel great that we kind of expand our pecs. And we, I'm feeling pretty good, right? And I'm feeling healthy. No, and yeah. we don't. We, we yeah. contract. It's like uh, I'm not feeling so good. They do the same thing. They contract them when they're like down depressed, not feeling well, not feeling healthy. And when they're feeling better, they expand. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty. So we have a language. We say, I'm proud of myself. They don't have that language, but they have that feeling. So this was a, another day. Look right? at the pecs. Yeah. yeah. Look at the change in the pecs. And, and I think this was two days later uh, in her stall, right? Right. But just you know, a lot different response. A lot of licking and chewing, the relaxation, the swaying, all those kinds of things going on. And um, yeah. I think this one, she does have a little startle moment. We'll just, I'll just let this play. I can't remember if this is the one or not. When she's working on releasing her emotional center, see how quiet the tail is and how she's allowing the sit button to be really, really engaged. And you can see the arc of it. It's above the hawk. It's above the tendon that leads to the hawk. It's the, 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 the crook of the butt, really. And then she engages this sit button. That's really, really important because horses will touch each other there when they want another horse to calm down emotionally. So they'll, so, they'll soothe them there. They'll lift them or they'll put their forehead They'll also bite another horse who's being too um, too intense. They'll bite them in this, like sit down, Junior. So it's a big button for them. Stallions will often um, nibble mares there, like oh, yeah. be calm, be, don't buck, please. Uh, she had a big twiggle a second ago. A twiggle is like a twitch wiggle. It's like the skin, the skin does that. It was around from girth to the, to the jump up. So that's like, who am I connected to? Girth, who's my team? Who's my herd? So she's sorting through that and then jump up. What do I feel? Where do I feel safe? Where do I feel vulnerable? Um, who do I feel intimate with? What do I feel comfortable doing? And so look at the rolling yeah, right. of the yeah. of her ribs, but also the her jump up jump button. Up, and also the yield over button right. too. And all of that will absolutely contribute to a poor canner because if, if her girth and her jump up button are tight, because I don't know where I feel safe. I don't know who I'm connected to. Uh, you know, I don't know, uh, there's, there's too many I don't knows, then that's always going to stay, you know, really contracted, which means the pelvis is going to be tense. tense. So look at what she's, the rocking and rolling she's doing in her pelvis, but it's yeah. after twiggling her jump up button. So which she's processing back here feelings. somewhere. Let's see, she twiggled. I think when you went to the other side of the beam. Yeah. Yeah, it's right around here. That's where she changed. It was before she changed hip. After the beam, before she changed hip. There it is. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, there's a lot that happened there. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, I we've run over and I've got it's really fascinating. It's so much fun to show videos to you guys and have you talk about what's going on with the horses. Um, it's also really fun because it makes me go back and look at these videos and really slow them down and sit and go, holy crap, there that was there all along, you know. And it's 
Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing about horse speak that's so amazing is it's really helping people become better observers and seeing all these little subtle things. You have many ways in which you can help people to become better observers, because if you don't see it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> that's it. And just being able to learn about the buttons and the emotional meaning, the physical meaning, the psychological meaning, the social meaning can yeah. help you be able to be precise when you're saying, hey, it can you you know, engage your jump up button to help you get into this canter or go away face, neck, shoulder, please move a step over. So you can have much more clarity in the conversations rather than this like chewing just or in general, flailing or like, whatever. Yeah. Just, just move for us. Cause we're like, so just, I'm gonna leave you with this because it's so connected to what you do. Um, so if we say to a horse, take your right foot and put it forward, right? We're thinking like that sort of, and they're, in their mind, they're saying, okay, this is what that could mean to me. Do you want this or this or this or this or this or this or this? Which one? Which one did you mean? Because that's take my right foot and put it forward at what angle? Because the rest of my body is going to be a big boat behind that angle. And can you be more precise, please? And so that's what they're looking at. And we're like, I don't know, just go forward. And so just to answer Trish's um, question real quick is that typically when the horse is hind What's the legs right here we'll read it can you say more about what it means when the horse puts her hind legs close together and so typically in a mayor you know we're looking at for well for geldings we're seeing a lot of times when the geldings have their hind feet together they could be talking about their gelding scar and there might be some pinching happening in their hind end um, as well as just overall maybe a little bit of a discomfort physically and then also it could be emotionally feeling a little bit insecure. Right. So when they pinch, just like us, um, or think of a dog going I, 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 and tucking their tail and scooting their butt close, they, they pinch their butt cheeks together. I'm like, don't get me, don't get me. And the horse is doing the same thing. They're pinching their butt cheeks together, pinching those hind legs together. It's a don't get me, don't get me. It's that same feeling of being just emotionally pinched. All right, so how can people learn more about horse speak? Well, they can go to SharonWilsey.com and that's our base website. And then you can get referred over to the HorsespeakAcademy.com where we're hosting our new online learning platforms. We have the Horse Speak Club, which is amazing. We meet every Tuesday, twice a day at one and at seven. And then we also have uh, two really beautiful programs. We got a three month program and a year long program available for sale. we got the new book coming out. So um, there's a lot to learn. And of course the old books and you got some videos on YouTube. I love the dinner party. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And, and I just wanted to say that I really love going on the journey of the Mustang with you with the Surefoot pads and yes. being able to specifically say what she's feeling with each step of that journey. And what I loved is, and we've said this before, there's an aspect in horse speak where horses are looking for objects to help represent safety and they do it anyway. And what's been wonderful is to realize like how powerful the pad can be, even if they're not standing on it, right. but just what, when even she, just that sec, couple when seconds. she made that connection mm -hmm. of like, this pad is helping me feel better in my body and you're bringing it. So you just went up in my hierarchy because you brought me connection and comfort. And the pad is now connected to you like wearing grandma's hat. So just take the pad out and she's like, Wendy's here. Yeah. <laughs> or my mom and, who's now learned how to give me comfort. And I think that that's so important that people can do this for their horses, just like they can use horse speak to make a better communication with their horses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why we love the two together. Well, thank you guys. It's so great to see you again. I hope you stay cool. My thermometer is reading 104 out there right now. So I think I'm going to stay inside. I know. Stay inside. Well, that's warm. We're at a very cool, probably We're 60 having a something. Rainstorm, it's, not, so. it's not very hot today. I'm actually um, cold. Yeah. Oh, wow. So All right. Well, we're supposed to cool off the next few days. I hope you don't care. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So take care. Thank you, Wendy, for hosting us. It's an Thank absolute you. pleasure to share oh, space I just, with you and yeah. all of our audience members. All right. And thanks, everybody. Have a great day. You're Cheers. Bye. Bye.